In this lesson, we're going to blast through some of the most useful date and time functions in Excel. And we're pretty much going to cover most of the date and time functions that you're going to come across. So on this worksheet, we have a column, column A, that contains a date. And this date is currently in short date format. And we then have an invoice total. And what I want to do is I want to extract certain parts of this date into separate columns. And we're going to do this using date functions. Now, the majority of these that I'm going to show you rely on the fact that we have the full date in column A, because we're going to use this column as our reference point to extract the various different parts of this date. So effectively, we're breaking up this date into its different parts. And I'm going to show you a function in a moment that kind of does the opposite. So if you have things like the day number, the month number and the year, how you can combine them all together into a short date format. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's run through all of these different functions. So in column C, we want to extract the day number from the date in column A. So we have a function called day. Now notice there is only one argument for this, and that is serial number. And this is slightly misleading because what Excel means by a serial number is just the cell that contains the date. So in this case, A4. Close the bracket, hit enter. It's extracting the day part of this date. So in this case, 10. I can then double click, which is going to copy that formula down and extract the days for the rest of the date. Super easy. Now, what if I want to extract the day name from this date? And what I mean by the day name is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so on and so forth. Now, this works in a slightly different way, because if the answer that you want to extract from a date is a text based answer, such as the day name or maybe the month name, you need to use the text formula. This function has two arguments, value and then format text. Now, the value, again, is just the cell that we want to extract from. And then we need to provide the format for this day. So this is where those MMMs and DDDs come in again. So if we're extracting the day, we want to use the D, but how many Ds we use will determine if I get MUN, M-O-N, or Monday. And this needs to go in quote marks because it is essentially text. Now, if I type in three Ds, first of all, and close my quotes and hit enter, I'm going to get the short version of the day name. Let's double click to edit. If I was to add another D in here and hit enter, I get the long day name. And then I can double click to copy that down. So just remember that when you're trying to extract things from dates, if it's text, you need to use the text function. Let's move across to the next column because this time we want to extract the month number. And for this, we use the month function. Again, one argument, which is the serial number, A4, close the bracket, hit enter, and we get the month number part of this date. Now, once again, the next thing that we're extracting is the month name. So this is going to be January, February, March, and this is text. So we need to use the text function again. Let's select our value, which is A4, and then we can choose our format, which needs to go in quote marks. So this time we're dealing with the month, so we want M's in here. If I do three M's, I'm going to get the short version of the month, so Jan, Feb, Ma. If I put four M's, I'm going to get the long version of the month. Let's hit enter, and then of course I can double click to copy that down. Really straightforward. The next one is super easy. We're extracting the year, and we have a year function. You guessed it, serial number, close the bracket, hit enter, and it's going to extract the year part of that date. And then finally, I can extract the weekday number. And we can do that using the weekday function. Now, the first argument here is the serial number, so we need the date again. And now we can specify how we number our weekdays. 
Now, I tend to number mine as in Monday is 1 all the way through to Sunday being 7. But some people in different parts of the world number their weekdays differently. Some people might start their week on a Sunday, and so that is number 1 to them. Some people might start on a Thursday, so on and so forth. And this is the argument where you can specify exactly that. So if I choose to put a 2 in here as this argument, it's going to number Monday as 1 through to Sunday 7. And that is exactly what I want. Close the bracket, hit enter, and now I get the weekday number. Double click. So if I just take a quick look at this, this first one is 4, and yes, Thursday, according to me, is day number 4. And if I wanted to get super fancy, and this will even give us a chance to practice a quick if statement, I could type in an if statement here, which tells me if this date effectively in column A is a weekend or a weekday. So what I could say here is equals if my logical test. Well, what I can say is if the weekday is greater than five, if that is true, then yes, it's the weekend. If it's not, then no, it isn't. Because Saturday and Sunday are effectively numbered six and seven. So if I hit enter and then copy this down, I should find that most of these are no, except when we get to anything that is a six or a seven, which will be yes, because these represent Saturday and Sunday. So some really useful functions in there. Now, I mentioned earlier that we can, in fact, do the reverse of that and combine values together to create a date. So if we take a look at this table at the top here, you can see I have the year in one column, the month in another column, and the day in another column. So what I can do here is use the date function. And all I need to do is specify the cell. So the year is cell K4, the month is L4, and the day is M4. Close the bracket, hit enter, and I get that date, which I can double click and copy down. I could do exactly the same for time. So equals time. We need to specify the hour, the minute, and the seconds. Close bracket, hit enter, and there I get my times. Super useful functions. Now let's jump across to the time functions worksheet because I just want to finish off by showing you how we can do pretty much exactly the same, but this time using time as our serial number. So I have some times in this first column and we can break those down using more functions in Excel. So the first one is the hour function. Again, it just requires a serial number and it's going to pull out of that the hour. Double click to copy down. We have a minute function. Again, serial number is required. And we can double click to copy that down. And then finally, we can add the seconds by using the second function. Serial number, close the bracket, hit enter, and then we can double click to copy that down. Now, because of the way that I have these times, these last two are just showing zeros and that is actually correct, it's really only this first column that has different values in it. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.